Hi, weekly roundup number 30 has LoRa modules, particle boards, particle board, that sounds like a hardware store. Oh, and there's also SBCs galore. Sort of makes up for last week's abysmal effort. There's not that many things on Kickstarter that I've included in this video, but I've included them on my website, so check them out there. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Note that as usual, I've included all the links to these products on my website, and there's a handy video index in the YouTube description below. So first up on Kickstarter, there's an Ardu ECU, which is essentially a rugged waterproof case for an Arduino Uno and OBD board. It is a little expensive, but if you don't want to hack around with soldering, but want to hack your car, then this might be the thing. It also contains nine digital outputs and five PWM outputs, all MOSFET driven, and nine digital inputs and six analog inputs, which are 24 volt tolerant. Of course, it's Arduino IDE compatible because it's just an Arduino Uno. Simon Monk has a new Kickstarter called the Monk Makes Duino, which is an Arduino Uno clone that has all pinouts running along one side to allow it to be slotted into a breadboard. It's a neat idea to gain easy access to all the pinouts of the Uno. This next one is designed to be a standalone touch interface. It contains a Wemos D1, which is based on the ESP8266, a Nextion USART display, LEDs, buzzer, GPIOs, and runs off a 5 volt supply. Looks like a fairly decent little board. Woohoo! Crowd supply, have an SPC in pre launch. This one is based on the NXP LS1043 which is a quad-core Cortex-A53 running at 1.6 GHz. 2 gigs DDR4 RAM, nice. 512 megs NAND flash, SD slot, 5 gigabit Ethernet, 2 mini PCIe, M2 to USB 3.0, running off a 12 volt DC supply. With all those network ports and no display, it's obviously aimed at routers or gateways. Will be interesting once it goes live. Gumsticks have added to their 96 boards collection, with a new board powered by an Intel Curie running the Arc EM4 MCU. Apart from the inbuilt Bluetooth, it also contains a 6 DOF IMU, USB based FTDI, 96 board compatible GPIO header, and USB Type C. The Orange Pi guys have released yet another board called the Orange Pi 2G IoT. This new design has veered away from using the all winner socks using the RDA 8810PL sock from RDA Microelectronics. This sock is aimed at mobile markets and contains a 2G GSM, Vivanti GC860 GPU, 256 MB DDR2 RAM, SD slot, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, MIPI CSI, LCD, USB 2.0 and a small amount of GPIOs. It's an odd board. Similar to the Omega 2 with its tiny RAM size, so you'll be pulling your hair out trying to get things to work in that small footprint. But looks interesting anyway. You can pick this up from AliExpress and also Banggood. Do you want OTA updates for your Linux devices? Well, Minda has now released a production ready service to allow you to do this. It supports any Linux distro, but is ideally optimized for Yocto Linux. The management service allows you to update and deploy to your devices with a click of a button. This is a subscription based service that starts at $99 for 100 devices, so not really aimed at the casual hacker. Tindy has a few interesting bits and pieces this week. The LoRa Mini is a small module that contains a LoRa module and Atmega 328P. Runs off 1.8 to 3.7 volts and of course consumes up to 80 milliamps. A nice little self contained module. And if you want to power up from a USB port and have easier access to the GPIOs, then there's this board. I thought this little mini LiPo to 5 volt regulator was pretty neat. Contains a small buck converter capable of spitting out 600 milliamps at 90% efficiency. Another Tindy store from down under. This board contains an M10478 GPS module, along with SuperCap and fits onto any Raspberry Pi model, although it's the same footprint as the Pi Zero. Or well, there's another version of this board that contains an LSM 9DS0 9DOF IMU and a BMP180 barometric sensor. Great for dead reckoning when GPS signals are unstable. This small board contains the Cirrus Logic WM8524 stereo DAC. 
which is accessible via I2S and runs off a 3.3 volt supply, so it's not 5 volt tolerant. Over at Seed Studio, there's a Pi board on back order. This one contains the STM32F411 MCU with MicroPython preloaded, USB, SD slot, and 29 GPIOs, all running off a 3.6 to 16 volt supply. Nice. And if you don't want to wait for my video on how to build a cheap LoRaWAN gateway, you can pick up this expensive one from Seed. It's actually pretty decent with 10 channels, Grove ports, and bridge to Pi 3 converter. Adafruit have come out with a SAMD21 based Feather M0 Express. Like all the Feathers, has LiPo battery support. I've mentioned this SAMD21 before, and it's pretty neat. With 256 kilobytes flash, 32 kilobytes RAM, 6 UART engines, and 20 reconfigurable GPIOs. They also have a particle asset tracker based on Particle's 3G 3 month data plan. Also contains Particle Electron, 1 amp hour LiPo, breadboard, and weatherproof enclosure. Or if you already have a particle, you can power it using this shield, which is based on the MCP73871 battery management chip. Over at Adafruit, they have a bunch of quick modules, such as this IMU module based on the MMA8452Q. A quick Arduino shield with four quick connectors. And a quick shield for a particle photon. If you're in need of a beefy high torque servo motor, then this one is capable of moving 40 kilograms per centimetre, or 550 ounces per inch, running off 7.4 volts and will need a supply capable of delivering a 9 amp peak current. This is a pretty beefy servo. Over at Solarbotics, they have their sketchboard, which isn't new I know, but I haven't had it on my roundups yet. It's an Arduino Uno clone with 5 volt or 3.3 volt logic tolerant inputs from 7 to 15 volt DC supply and can deliver a stepped up 800 milliamp 5 volts and 3.3 volt onboard regulators. This is basically a beefier version of the Arduino Uno. And over in China, Banggood have a 32 channel servo controller board running off 4.2 to 7.2 volts and capable of driving 9G to 55G servos via a plain USB based UART. Don't know what chip is driving this as they've gone and sanded them down. There's also a 16 channel version of the same board. Banggood also have the Orange Pi NAS expansion board which gives you a humble Orange Pi Zero and mSATA interface, external SATA port, two more USB ports, mic, audio and composite video out and also infrared. I have one of these sitting on my desk, so stay tuned for that review. Then there's the Orange Pi Win, which I mentioned in a previous roundup. But for those who missed it, it's an SBC that will eventually run Windows 10 IoT once they complete their certification. It has the all winner A64, 1 gig RAM, SD slot, 4 USB 2.0 ports, MIPI CSI, MIPI LCD, LiPo connector, gigabit Ethernet, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, there's also space for an optional EMMC. This is a cool board that allows you to power on or off your Pi via an onboard button or via infrared remote control. And this board contains an I2C based 4 channel ADC capable of 16 bit resolution at up to 860 samples per second. So it's suitable for slow acquisition and high accuracy inputs such as temperature sensors. Another Pi board clone, but this one has a faster STM32 MCU, around the same price as the one from Seed Studio. And a tiny Atmega 32U4 board that's about the same size as the USB connector. That's pretty small. I also have a bunch of these that I'm keen to put to some use. Another 8051 board, nice. This one gives you all the bits needed to give you an idea of why people both loved and hated the 8051 MCU. This cheap board combines an NRF51822 Bluetooth module and LIS3DH accelerometer together allowing you to pull in motion data over Bluetooth using a plain coin cell battery. And over at DX.com there's a 2.2 inch TFT touchscreen Arduino shield. It supports all the common Arduinos and has an onboard SD slot, temperature sensor and a 300 milliamp capable regulator which is great as most Arduinos aren't capable of powering anything over 50 milliamps. The next week and a half I'm actually taking some time off. I planned a holiday to New Zealand with my family some months back. So I'll be putting up some pre-recorded videos in the weekend 
and my weekly roundups might look a little different. Also, stay tuned for details on yet another competition I'll be kicking off this weekend, where I'll be giving away some of my large booty, which has nothing to do with my rear end. Come on, guys. If you want to see some of the things I might be giving away, then check out Mick Mail number seven. Thanks for watching, and I've got to get packing for the land of fush and chops.